everybody. So I'm down in London today. I'm about to go into the National Portrait Gallery for the Paul McCartney Eyes of the Storm exhibition. Very much looking forward to it. You can see people queuing up there, getting ready to go in. The doors are just about to open. I'm going to go in there. I won't be able to photograph inside, but I'm going to tell you um, what I thought about it once I've been in. And then I'm heading on to I Am The Egg Pod Live, which is um, a show of my, my favourite Beatles podcast anyway. And Mark Lewison's going to be one of the guests. Um, as well as some other really good guests. I'll tell you all about that as well afterwards. So anyway, I'm going to head in there now and uh, I'll let you know what I think about it in a moment. So that was fun. Uh, cost about £22 to get in, which I think was really good value. It was absolutely packed in there. Now, to my surprise, you could take photographs in there. So I'm going to show you a selection of those shortly. So it took me about an hour to get around. And I think you could spend a lot longer than that if, you, uh, if you're somebody who really, really takes your time. I don't think you'd want to be spending much less than an hour there. But that was really great, split into sections. So as you go in, it starts off with the earliest photos from the back end of 1963. So it's got some photos from, from uh, shows in Liverpool when they moved on to London. So a real good selection of photos that Paul McCartney took at the back end of 1963, as it had already got massive in the UK. Uh, it then moves on to a section for uh, Paris in very early 1964, uh, which again is really interesting. And some of the photos that you see uh, just of, of the Beatles playing, having fun, enjoying themselves, being serious as well. Uh, the, the, you'll have seen some of these photographs before, but only a very, very small uh, fraction of them. And. Uh, it then moves on to America, it moves on to the section from February 1964. You see the cold of New York and Washington and uh, rehearsing for the Ed Sullivan show, arriving in America to all those thousands of, of people at, at the airport to greet them. And again, just really candid shots from Paul, really, really fun to see. And then it moves on to the warmth of uh, Miami, which in my last video when I unveiled the book, I, I mistakenly said was summer of 64. I realise I got that completely wrong. It was all part of the same trip. But then, it, yeah, it does turn into glorious colour as the cover Miami. So it's really, really fun to see. If you're going to get a chance to be in London over the summer, it's on till uh, about the back end of September. Um, really, really would recommend it if you're a Beatles fan go and see that because you're going to see loads of things that you've you've never seen before obviously a lot of them are in the book but there's so much more as well as what's in the book there there's uh, there's a really good montage of photos uh, well beyond what's on display there but it's like a moving montage of photos uh, of which you're probably never going to see anywhere else so really interesting but I've moved over now to Opera Holland Park which you can see behind me there I'm going in there in about an hour's time to see uh, a live version of my favourite Beatles podcast. Uh, it's called I Am The Egg Pod, hosted by Chris Shaw. And he's got some great guests with him today. So uh, the, the star attraction, I'm sure, who's brought pulled most people in is Mark Lewison, as always. Two weekends in a, in a row I've seen Mark. So uh, I'm going to come back after the show and uh, just give a, a, a review of the show. There's also Stuart McConey, who was on with Mark Lewis in last weekend when I saw him. So again, it was strange that I'm seeing him two weekends in a row. David Quantic, the comedy writer, very well respected writer, he's going to be a guest. I think, I think um, strangely, in a show that features Mark Lewis, the guest that I'm most looking forward to seeing is Samira Ahmed, who, um, who is responsible for bringing us the really sort of exciting story over the last couple of months about the, the first... Um, the, the, the first pretty much full recording of a Beatles concert, like the earliest concert, it's only just been um, revealed that it was ever recorded and she was very instrumental in finding out about this and bringing it to the, to the public's attention so I'm sure she's going to talk about that an awful lot. So anyway, I'm going in there to see Eggpod Live and I'll be back afterwards with my thoughts on it. Well, events overtook me. It's now the following morning, I just did not get chance to do this follow-up video yesterday for reasons that I'll go into. So at Opera Holland Park, what a beautiful venue. Um, uh, I was pleased to, again, saw loads of people who uh, came and said hello, which was fantastic. So Trevor, Niels from Denmark, who, who did an interview with me, which I think is gonna be on a, a Danish podcast of his. I'll hopefully you should be able to share a link to soon. Loads of other people hanging around before the uh, doors opened. A, a guy came over, started talking to us. He said, um, have, you seen, have you seen Chris Shaw? Chris who runs Eggpod. 
no, 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 I've not seen him, Mendy. All oh, right, okay. And a little bit of a chat, and he and he wandered off. It was only an hour later I realised who it was. It was Peter Asher, Jane Asher's brother, Peter and Gordon. Um, you know, you, you wish you'd remembered these things as you're talking to them. But uh, anyway, never mind. I blew my chance to have a good chat with with Peter Asher yesterday. So the show started. The show was the show was recorded, so it is going to be broadcast as an episode of the egg pod podcast uh, at some point soon once chris has had a chance to get it ready so there will be a there will be a recording available for anybody to listen to um if you follow i am the egg pod um just search for that in your podcast provider you'll be able to find that so the first half the show was split into two halves first half um chris had three guests on with him so as i said there was samira ahmed Stuart McConey and David Quantic. And th- this hour, this is one of the quickest hours I've ever experienced in my life. It just went so quickly. Uh, but Samira, Stuart and David talking, uh, th- they were guided a bit by uh, Chris in his questions. So there was things like, what's your favourite Beatles moment, Beatles single? And the, the moments were good because these are people who've got sort of personal connections to the Beatles in, in various ways in terms of having having met them and focused on the careers and such like. So they were able to bring quite personal memories to it, which was really interesting. So Samira did indeed talk about the Stowe school tape, that, that earliest, almost complete concert of the Beatles in the UK that was only really discovered this year. It's been sat in, the, the guy who recorded it, uh, it's been sat in his house for 60 years, never done anything with it. Uh, so and that's all come to the attention this year. Samira was just absolutely led that, uh, and and if you don't know, it's available in the British mu- uh, the British Library. Uh, there's one in London. There's one in Boston Spa in Yorkshire as well. And you can go and you can you can ask, and they will play you the tape. You can go and listen to it. So it's great that it's made available for everybody. So she was talking quite a lot about that. There were some funny stories between uh, Stuart and David as well, as well. Stuart was telling some of the same stories that he told the week before in uh, Salford when I went to see his Evolver 63 show with Mark Lewison. Uh, but they were funny and David Quantic added some extra extra jokes to it as well, which was uh, funny that the story about um, Paul McCartney when he appeared on the Ferry Aid charity single in, when was it, about 1987 or 88? And they did a recording of Ferry Across the Mersey and David was saying about how Paul McCartney was in the studio there, lent across to one of the musicians while they're playing this song and said, I fucking hate this song, <laughs> and that got a good laugh. That was that was funny. But this hour just flew by. We then had an interval, and uh, well, milling around outside the interval again. Great to see load, loads of people who um, who came and said hello. But I saw Andy Bell from Oasis and Ride, so I thought I'm going to go and have a chat with Andy. Got my photograph taken with him, and I said to him, "I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to come and see you in the next couple of years' time when the band get back together, as in Oasis." And he said. Um, he said, yeah, I'm hoping that too, which I thought was quite telling. I said, it'd be interesting to see what um, what configuration of the band, what lineup they put back together again. He said, well, I've got nothing to do with that, which of course it would be Liam and Noel who decide that. He said, uh, but if they ask me, I'll be there. I thought, oh, nice one. He's, uh, he's, he's secretly got a hope that that's going to happen as well. So it was nice to meet Andy. And then second half, Mark Lewison. Again, the hour just absolutely flew by. And... Uh, interesting approach that they, that they took um here which was quite fun because it was the first of july yesterday um and i don't know if it was because it was quite a momentous first of july as well it was the yesterday was the 60th anniversary of the recording of she loves you so the week before when i've been in salford some of you might have seen the video that i did about that where it had been the 60th anniversary on the day of when they wrote the song yesterday was the 60th anniversary of when they recorded it so they had quite a good chat about that. But then they focused on, OK, what, what was happening on the 1st of July in other years? So they went through from 1960 through to 1969, discussing what was happening on the 1st of July every year. And it's you really get to appreciate the, just the massive leaps forward that there was every single year during uh, the 1960s with the Beatles. You know, what they were doing one year was just so far removed from what they'd been doing even just a couple of years before. So that was a really interesting hour focusing on 1st of July's throughout the year. And then there was just a few minutes left for a, a Q&A. At the end, there was only chance for really a couple of questions to be asked. And I got the last one in. I was really grateful. I put my, I put my hand up and... Um, 
Chris looked over, ah, Andrew from YouTube, you ask your question to Mark Lewis and said, ah, Andrew Dixon from YouTube. I was like gobsmacked that Mark Lewis and uh, recognised me in the crowd. That was a, that was quite a cool moment. But I asked my question and I said, uh, I said, Mark, what's, what's the one biggest unknown thing in the Beatles story that you fear that you're never going to know the answer to? And he was like, he said, oh. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and he had to think about it, and he gave he gave um, a, a real good answer. It was it was almost heartbreaking this answer that he gave, where he was saying about back in was it about two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, when he was uh, really sort of in the meat of researching Volume One of Tune In, and he said he'd finally got um, the chance to speak to Neil Aspinall. He really wanted Neil's story. If you think Neil was right there on the very inside from way before they got famous, right through to the very end, and Neil was kind of one of the holy grails that he wanted. Neil had just recently left Apple, stopped um, sort of managing Apple, and he'd spoken to Mark and said, right, Mark, I'm not, I'm not working for Apple now. I can tell my story. So this was like, like I say, the holy grail for Mark. So they set up a, a meeting and they, they had a couple of hours together, but you can, as Mark said, you, can, you can't even scratch the surface in a couple of hours. So Neil had said to him, look, I'm going off to New York soon, um, in LA, he said he had a place out in LA, he said, you could even come out to LA if you want, let's do a series of interviews and we'll, we'll get done what you need. This was brilliant for Mark. So Neil, and Neil Aspinall went off to New York, got ill very quickly and died. Um, and Mark said, you know, he never got to, he said, he said about all those things that only Neil knew that died with him. And he was so close to getting them and he never quite got there. So that was, um, I said last week with the Mark Lewison show, there's always a bit of a wow moment. And that was it for me. I mean, maybe it's because I asked the question, I don't know, that it meant a bit more t to me. But that was, for me, it was like, oh God, just, just think of all those things that could have been told that will never be told now. So that was, uh, that was really interesting. And so the... Um, the guests were really generous with the time afterwards as well. They were they were they were at the side of the venue for ages talking to anybody who wanted to talk to them. I don't know if it's because I went on my own yesterday. And it's a, it's the first time I've been to one of these kind of shows on my own. I nearly always go with a friend or with family, but I went on my own yesterday. And I don't know if it's because of that, but it was there was like a real sense of community yesterday with that crowd that I've never really experienced at a Beatles show before. It was it was beautiful, to be honest. Um, and everybody just seemed to be there as as one. It was great. So, so anyway, we're all we're all there outside afterwards. Everybody's chatting. And the reason why I couldn't do this video yesterday, I was planning to go and sit in the park where I'd been earlier for the previous bit of this video. Chris said, Chris Shaw, um, Eggpod said to me, "We're all going to the pub afterwards. Do you want to come?" Too right, I do. So um, I ended up going to the pub, and then once you've been at a pub in London, and then coming out and going onto the underground and getting your train home, there was just no chance, no remote peace and quiet at all. Hence why I'm doing this this morning. So that was great. Got to go to the pub afterwards. I had a great chat with, uh, with with Chris, various other people, various other very interesting people who were there. Film, there was film producers, authors, um, photographers, and all sorts of people with really interesting stories to tell. But really glad that I got a chance to have a good conversation with Mark Lewison uh, just before I left for my train. Um, and I was telling him about something that I'm researching at the moment. I've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, it's to do with the first day of the Beatles 1964 autumn tour and what happened on that day. And I mentioned to Mark that I'm looking into this, hoping to do a video. Um, and Mark hasn't looked into this specific not incident, that's not the right word, but this thing that happened on that day, Mark hasn't looked into that so much. I said, I offered to send him some details and he said, well, if you do it properly, I don't have to research it. Um, I can hopefully use your stuff and, and, and give you a credit. So I'm thinking, well, if that doesn't give me an incentive to finish off this story, I don't know what will. Uh, so I'm going to do that and definitely get all the information that I've got over to Mark. And if he, if there's any of it that he can use, then then brilliant. So... Yeah, Eggpod Live was a really fun show. It absolutely flew by. I, I wish it had been twice as long, um, but it, but it was a two-hour show, and uh, you know, for about fifteen, sixteen pound for the ticket, you know, two hours, fantastic with some great guests. Really enjoyed it. 
Uh, Chris said that he did, um, well, he said, shall we do this again sometime? So hopefully he's going to do uh, another one of these maybe next year. That would be great. But like I say, it was recorded. It will be uh, on his podcast. So I am the Egg Pod. If you do a search for that and go to wherever podcasts are available, as soon as he's got that available, it'll be there. But have a listen to the podcast anyway, because he has great guests on, very knowledgeable guests, some of them right from inside what happened at the time you know he's had michael lindsay hogg recently talking about let it be he's had um patty boyd's sister jenny was the last one talking about the time in rishikesh in 1968 so really interesting guests anyway that's that that's my plug for i am the egg pod uh really enjoyable day and of course the photo exhibition as well yesterday morning superb if you get a chance to be in london uh by about the end of september Go and see that. It, it, it's great. You're not going to experience something that intensely Beatles related as an exhibition uh, very often in your life. So thoroughly recommend that. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed that review of, of yesterday, my trip to London. Thank you very much. Comments as always down below. Love to have a chat with you about it. And I will see you again soon. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>